This is Biker Dad. Welcome to the Biker Dad Show. We are on the road for an epic road trip. We are inside the Barber Vintage Motorcycle Museum. And I don't care how much we show you in this episode today. The video, the pictures, what I'm going to tell you will not do it justice. You need to come here and visit yourself. Just take a look at this. Just one view from this massive complex. We have five stories. All the way down there is the basement. Vintage race cars, second floor, more race cars and motorcycles. Look at these motorcycles stacked up. Third floor. From the inception of Harley Davidson in 1903 and even before that, all the way to today's bikes, they have absolutely everything. We're going to tell you how all this started with one man's vision and philanthropy, and we're going to be taking you through this huge park where hundreds of thousands of people and their vintage motorcycles have all come here to join in their love of motorcycles and each other and just have an awesome time on these cool bikes, old and new. My name is Jeff Ray. I'm the executive director here at the Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum in Birmingham, Alabama. Well, we consider ourselves the world's largest motorcycle museum. We've got over 1,600 bikes on inventory and about 1,000 bikes on display at any given time when you come in. Uh, our building is quite unique. It resembles a parking deck. We have five levels that you can view. Uh, and we're also uh, known for our Lotus car collection. Uh, Mr. Barber, in his early days, was a car racer and had a great fascination with the Lotus marquee. So we've been able to work on and accumulate one of the larger collections of Lotus race cars. George Barber, uh, a local business fan here in Birmingham, uh, his name literally was on the milk carton in our region. His uh, family was in the dairy processing business. Uh, and as a young gentleman, he got involved in real estate. And of course, in the years going by, the dairy has now been sold off and his primary focus is real estate. But he also is a philanthropist and really wanted to do something positive for the city of Birmingham. As a collector with car collection and motorcycle collection, he realized that there is some interest and his collection could be used as a tool to attract people to Birmingham and be a tourist attraction for business and industry. So. After participating with the art of the motorcycle in New York City at the Guggenheim Museum, the art of the motorcycle at the Field Museum in Chicago, and the art of the motorcycle in Bilbao, Spain, he realized that uh, people have a definite interest and we can bring this interest to Birmingham. So in 2000, we sat down at the table, started dreaming this up. In 2003, we opened the doors to the museum. I'll tell you, I haven't found a camera person yet that can capture this on film and do it justice. It's just it's pretty amazing. And it's just, uh, you know, we're not like Disney World where you pay your money at the front desk and follow a blue line and exit out of the museum store. It's a gallery. And you can spend an hour here, you can spend eight hours here. It just really depends on your degree of interest and what you're looking at. We recommend the average family coming in to allow two hours. Uh, a motorcycle enthusiast, uh, we've had them come in in the morning when we open and we have to ask them to leave when we close at six in the evening. Well, the Finnish Festival started about 17 years ago, and it was just a thought. We said, you know, people enjoy real motorcycle racing. They really enjoy the Finnish motorcycle racing. Uh, we need to have a place where we can get together and share our stories and share our motorcycles. And of course, the AMA uh, program at uh, Mid Ohio was going on in the summertime, and it was a great, great event put on by the AMA, and it was the best thing going at the time. But it had pieces of the puzzle missing, and we said, well, why not? create the same puzzle here with all the pieces. And so we just went out, uh, talked to some vendors, said, look, you know, we don't need your vinyl siding, we don't need your sunglasses, we'd like to have your motorcycle parts. And we're gonna put it together, we're gonna make it to where people will want to come here, enjoy it, and uh, we'll watch it grow together, and we'll all benefit from it. And that was 17 years ago, and today we're where we're at today. You know, we have over 500 vendors here with swap meet, we have Arma that has 700 road race entries in it alone, not including the motocross. Uh, we have trials cross country. We've got the BJMC here with a really nice bike show. We got the wall of death, the globe of death. We've got all the deaths covered there. So, you know, it's just a, it's an attraction. And it's all tied together in one location. The museum anchors it. And then we have the loop road and the loop road connects you to all of these activities and we have the tram system that ties it all together. So you bring your motorcycle out, you park in the museum lot, park in the park somewhere, jump on the tram, and really enjoy. Well, we're just under 900 acres here. 
and we've developed a little over 300 acres. We have the 2.38 mile road course. It's 45 feet wide, 80 feet of elevation change. The guys on the bikes love it. Uh, you know, we run uh, Moto America here as well as IndyCar. Uh, we also do a lot of programs. We're home for the Porsche Sport Driving School. Uh, they operate here over 150 days a year. Uh, we work with Mercedes-Benz, which has manufacturing about 60 miles from here. They have their brand immersion program here. So there's a lot of things going on at the track. So even visiting the museum on an average day, there's no telling what you're going to see on the track. There's always something going on. It's a living museum, so everything you see in the collection is in running condition. As part of that process, we've got our own restoration staff, and not all that work takes place in the basement. And of course, you know, insurance and activity and productivity, you can't have people mingling around with that. So when we do shut down for programs, we do open those areas up, the mechanics are there to answer questions and talk, kind of showcase what they do, but we're not actually performing, we're just actually entertaining at that point. But it's a great chance to come in and see what they do and, you know, what all it takes to do. And a compliment to the mechanics. Uh, I've got a couple of guys, one's in his mid-40s, one's in his early 30s. And these guys are working on bikes that are three times their age in some cases. And you said, well, there's not a lot to that. So the motorcycle mechanic's a motorcycle mechanic. But you got to stop and think. You go to a Yamaha dealer or a Harley dealer, those guys have got factory training. They've got manuals, they've got all the support, they've got a tech that works next to them that can share information with them. It's real time. And the one problem is going to be the same problem on the next bike, the same problem on the next bike. And they're focused on one brand or one marquee or one era. These guys have to take a bike like a 1910 Yale, or they're taking a 1930 Indian, or they're taking a 1921 Harley, and they're having to do the research on that bike. And they have to disassemble the bike, they have to understand what they've gotten into, then they do the research on how correct it should be, how to bring it back, and once they're finished with that bike, they gotta forget all that, because their next bike may be a Honda Twin. So, you know, it's, uh, it's really interesting when you think about the talent that it takes to preserve and restore these machines. We have a lot of unobtainium here, and uh, we have our own machine shop. We actually have just opened up the Barber Design Studio, which we can actually scan components. If they're broken, we can modify that, then we can print a 3D version of it, and that can be used for castings or refabrication. The museum is here to stay. This program will continue to grow. It'll continue to evolve. We'll continue to introduce new and exciting things. That's kind of been our trademark of Vintage Festival. It's not the same old, same old. We're adding stuff every year. COVID allowed us to have to do a reset and change a lot, but we'll, we'll continue to grow and make it better. Uh, the collection will continue to grow. You know, 1,600 motorcycles. Uh, if we had one motorcycle from every manufacturer out there, that's over 2,600 different bikes from around the world. So we got a long way to go just to get that goal. And uh, so, you know, we have a mission, we have a purpose. Uh, we're trying to find the original and restored to preserve those. Unfortunately, when you can't find them, we'll take the oil spots and the bits of metal and we'll recreate that bike to have an example for the future. It's a great place to come live the future and see where the, history of the future can take us.